Good morning. Um, no vendor work today for me, but I still got up at 5.30. You know? I think it's important to keep a schedule. I didn't shave either, sorry. Okay, so today, um, you know, once these internet record groups get going, you hear the same story over and over and over again. Um, you know, when CDs came, I sold my collection. And then, you know, what was it, 2008 around, the vinyl revival, you know? Then all of a sudden, let's buy them all back. You know, it's, it's, I, I, don't, I don't get it. Sell your records? And people think, like, in the 90s, every single record store, records were gone. You know, they were like dinosaurs. A meteor hit the, hit the earth, and they all disappeared. You know, that's just not true. There were tons of record stores open, and releases came out. I bought In Utero and Vinyl, you know, shit came out. But, apparently, I, I, maybe it's people who kept their records really good and just it was more of, of a collection rather than, like, the history of it. And, you know, I'm blessed or cursed with a very good memory. So you could pick a record at random out of my collection and I could probably tell you, you know, where I bought it, about how much it cost, and, you know, something about it. Let's take this one, for example. This was my first T-Rex record, and really quickly, hard to believe if you live in the UK or whatever, but Mark Boland isn't, you know, really a, a big thing here, you know, get it on, you remember, you know, but people probably couldn't even equate, oh, T-Rex, you know, Mark Boland was in T-Rex, you know, anyway, so uh, the first Beatles book, my Aunt Vicky bought me, Beatles Forever, there was a picture of Ringo filming Mark Bolin, you know, for Born to Boogie. And uh, I was maybe 10 or 11, and I'm like, who is this, who is this Mark Bolin guy? I'm, you know, blah, blah, blah. So I go to the used record store, Record Hunt, and uh, this was the only record they had for two bucks, you know? And it's funny because there's not even any of his big hits on here, you know? Born to Boogie, you might remember, but not back then. You know, two bucks. So, you know, this was my introduction. I mean, T-Rex are one of my favorite fucking groups ever, you know, and, uh, like, I'm gonna get rid of this, I would've sold this in the 90s, you know, no way, you know, plus it doesn't have the poster, so what are you gonna get for it, <laughs> but, yeah, you know, no way, you know, and even more importantly than that, uh, geez, right here, Columbia Record Club, when it came out, 1977, you know, I ordered the, you know, it's like, I heard about the Ramones, but again, like I said in this other video, you know, you don't, you don't really hear these, where are you going to hear these people? They don't play them on the radio or anything, but yeah, I mean, these guys, this is how I, I minus the leather jacket, this is how I dressed, you know, <laughs> so it's like, oh, I got it, you know, so I get the record from Columbia House, and it has this uh, inside sleeve, you know, it was vaguely scary when I was, you know, 11 years old. So I, I was home by myself when the package came, and I waited till my brother got home. <laughs> so there was somebody else in the house, and then I put it on. And, you know, there were moans, you know. So, uh, yeah, and it's like, well, I'm going to get rid of this? You know, no way. How could you sell, you know, how could you just, like, take all the accumulated memories you had and take them to a store, and then you couldn't even get anything for records back then, you know, they'd buy your collection for pennies, and I'm sure all those people are kicking themselves right now, because now records are, you know, the new Beanie Babies, and it's the speculating or whatever, they're worth a fortune, you know, so, uh, yeah, you, you can't get rid of records, I don't, I don't understand it, you know, and then, and like I said, the ironic part is, you buy them all back, you know, it doesn't, it, it well, whatever, hindsight is twenty twenty, isn't it? And I had, you know, I did sell, I, you know, I do sell records occasionally. I mean, not just the stuff that you sell at fairs that I buy to sell or had extras of. But, uh, you know, times are tough in the 90s for I me. Mean, times are tough now. But, uh, yeah, eventually, you know, sometimes I just have to make these hard choices and grab a few records, you know, because I needed a few bucks. You know, if you got to eat or pay the rent, you know, what do you, I'm the, you know, not that nuts. But, uh one thing, and, you know, this happened almost 30 years ago, and it still bothers me. That should tell you something, you know, but I brought in, like, a small collection of my vinyl bootlegs, you know, because they always held their value even when their CD or uh, But, uh, yeah, you know, I had a couple Stones albums, and uh, I traded in a couple REM bootlegs, I remember. But I can remember, you know, because it drove me nuts. 
And uh, I remember specifically, you know, I had like two Keith Richards bootlegs back then, and this was one of them. It's hilarious. He's basically just playing songs in a hotel room, and it's supposedly on his honeymoon. That's what it's called, the honeymoon tapes, but who knows, you know. Keith gets married, goes on his honeymoons, gets drunk, and spends the night with an acoustic guitar and some guy with a bad Spanish accent. At least that's what we're told. Yeah, perfect. You know, he's doing a lot of oldies and shit like that. It's great, but I remember. I remember specifically, I have this one, and I had one other one. It was a double album, but I remember a couple songs were, like, the wrong speed. They they went too slow. And really, so I was like, you know, oh, just like this uh, Sophie's Choice, you know. So I got rid of that one and kept this one, but it still drives me nuts. I don't have that one anymore, you know. So it, it's important. I mean, and this was selling, like, you know, ten records. So I, I still remember that, you know. It's, anyway, so that's that. But then there's this other thing that uh, during that time when people were buying CDs rather than vinyl, and then this vinyl thing comes back. So now, oh no, I have to buy them all on vinyl again, you know. Like, you know, how many times did they put out the Hendrix albums or whatever. But, like, that I don't understand either because there was very little overlap between what I bought on CD back then... And what I bought on album, I'd be like, what do I want to buy that for? I already have the album. And now, conversely, it's why would I buy the vinyl when I have the CD? I mean, once in a while, because now it might be changing because they're they're creeping up. But CDs were, you know, pennies, you know, for a long time, for a few years now, you know. So if I see something like, look, like that, that was a dollar. That was a dollar. This one has like 12 extra tracks, so it's like getting another album, you know. So those I... I would grab, but not for any money. This is when my boy bought me for free, you know. So, like, there's a few. I mean, I would say maybe 20, 30, you know. But to buy it over again, and this goes even further because this was the first Flame and Groovies release I ever bought. You know, another band, you know, you kind of had to seek them out pre internet, you know. And you'd be like, oh, these been are fucking great. What are you crazy? You know what I mean? But, like, this just came out recently on vinyl, you know what I mean? And it's like, what do I need the vinyl for? I just put this on. What's the fucking difference? You know what I mean? I mean, maybe I, I, I understand that the vast majority of record collectors probably have more disposable income than myself. But again, buying something twice, you know, forget it. So I don't understand. I'm not necessarily downing anybody because you'd have to down three quarters of the people who collect records now, you know? They're all new. Or they bought them again. You know what I mean? So so this time, this time, if the vinyl thing goes away again, you know, just just don't do that. Don't 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 fucking buy it on, you know, a little helmet you put on your head and it might play the music. If that becomes the new hip thing, don't buy the helmets and then sell your fucking records again. Or if you're gonna get in touch with me and let me, you know, name your price, right? We'll we'll, we'll talk. Okay? So, good morning.